Welcome to the Memoir Cafe. I'm Sonia Livingston, your guide to super fast author readings and interviews. Today's guest is Karen Saylor McElmary. Her latest book, Voice Lessons, is a great example of what's called a mosaic memoir. Yesterday, a friend sent me, she had just read the new memoir, mm -hmm. and she sent me a photo of something she made for me. Okay. It's a round shape, it's a mosaic. And it was all these broken pieces of Mexican pottery put together with clay. And she said, this is like this memoir. And I really agree with that. I feel like the memoir is in a way like a mosaic of experience. I mean, there's my ancestors, there's my mother's history, the, and there's a story of my mother's death. Mm -hmm. There's my story of illness. There's my story of being working class. Mm -hmm. There's my story of being in academia. And probably, you know, most of all, there's my story of learning to write mm -hmm. and to trust my own process. So it's a mosaic, I think. That's what this yeah. memoir is. Yeah, I agree. Like a mosaic, it, each, each section works beautifully and conveys flavor and color and texture and sound. But together you get, you do, you get a, a, a multi-layered image, which is just really beautiful. Beautiful individually and as a whole. One thing about the Memoir Cafe is I don't read author bios because mm -hmm. uh, I want to keep it casual and I want to focus on your your latest work, um, which is which is so gorgeous. But you're somebody who has been writing memoir since before it was even trendy, right? Like when was your first book published? Oh, the first book uh, was Surrender Child, A Birth Mother's Journey. And that came out in, I want to say 2002. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time ago. And it was before uh, there were many, many books mm -hmm. of creative nonfiction, many memoirs. Um, and in fact, it was before there was any kind of a program to study creative nonfiction. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a something I taught myself. Yeah, and I tell my students that sometimes that, you know, back when I wanted to, when I would, even before an MFA, I didn't even know what an MFA was, and people just didn't have a name for this creative nonfiction. And, you know, now we'll call it a creative essay or memoir, or all of that, but it wasn't the most popular form of writing for a while. Why do you think memoir has become, in, you know, 20 years is not such a long time. Why has there been such a boom, do you think, in people's desire for personal stories and our desire to write them? One, I think we live in a very fast-paced um, world in which we need a center. I almost always want to refer to the Yates poem, the center cannot hold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've just now been through a pandemic. Out my window, there's a plague of cicadas. <laughs> I mean, it's a world without a center in some way, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, mm -hmm. in all kinds of ways. And for me, the memoir is a journey toward a soul, toward deep contemplation and understanding. Mm -hmm. um, the more cynical answer is that we come from an age that's very ego-driven, very narcissistic. Mm -hmm. And so we produce tons of memoirs as a result of that. But I choose to adhere to the first answer. Okay. <laughs> to discover a self badly needed. Uh, voice Lessons is the name of the book. And I think so much about voice when I think about you as a writer. So what is it about some, why are some voices so much stronger than others? And I mean that as writers, mm -hmm. but also as uh, characters or our people, because you, uh, you have a strong writing voice, but you also, your, your writing is saturated with just other voices. So what makes for those strong voices? I grew up, you know, it was a difficult family. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get listened to very mm -hmm. much, and I spent a lot of time alone. Mm -hmm. I learned to listen carefully. Partly I learned to listen carefully to defend myself, to take care of myself, mm -hmm. to make my space safe. Mm -hmm. So listening taught me the power of listening to other people mm -hmm. and um, listening to their stories as far back as I can remember. Okay. And as also as far back as I can remember, I have been writing in one form or another. Mm -hmm. Since I was maybe nine, I wrote poems, not very good poems, mm -hmm. but um, I've been writing and writing and writing. And I think practice is what brings us um, the power of voice to the page. Yeah, it's, it's great you say that because a lot of times we talk about 
writer's eyes, like the writer, writers just notice and they do, but they also are supreme listeners. And I like what you just said about uh, what makes your voice strong is basically feeling silenced or quieted as, as a young person. And I, when I think about the voices I like best, they do tend to come from cultures that have been not very well heard. I would love to hear your voice now read a little bit from, from oh, voice lessons. Thank you. I'd be happy to do that. I'm going to read just two um, excerpts from an essay called Hands. Hands. I remember most my mother's hands, a warm cloth scrubbing my cheeks and her palm smelling like citrus. As she soaked my ears, neck, underarms, she'd tell me stories from her childhood, ones about the outhouse down the hill, and the way she had to wash her own face in the kitchen in a tin basin filled with sulfur water from a well. You're lucky, she said. If I was lucky, there was time to lock myself in the bathroom at night while they watched television. In the bathroom, I could study things in the cabinet, things that made her beautiful, lotions, powders, orange sticks to whiten her nails. Once I rinsed my mouth with her cologne and swallowed a soapy taste that left me spinning, my first taste of liquor. If no one came to make me open the door, I could lie down on the linoleum and stare into the bright coils of the heater. I was almost never alone, and that was one of the things that made me ashamed. I was ashamed of my own blunt fingers, their nibbled off cuticles, and the way my little fingers were as crooked as hers. I was ashamed of the one half-gone fingernail on her right hand. I was ashamed of how she bathed me, dressed me, the way her hands knew my body's secrets, the skin that never felt like, the own, like my own. The truth is my mother's hands were wounded, but over time her wounds were concealed by dementia. She vanished into forgetting. When I visited her, I slept in the room next to hers. I heard her turn and sigh in her sleep, fall silent, and I worried whether she was breathing at all. For many years she lived alone, without touch, without any other hand to hold than her own. As my mother vanished into forgetting, she could no longer find the one photo to show me what made her life what it was. I became the one to do the looking. In one photo that I've inherited, her father standing next to her, her sisters and her mother at the door of a church. Her sister Ruby is crossing her arms, scowling at the picture taker. Her mother's looking at the floor while her father's face is shadowed as if he holds a secret power. At the end of my first novel, a woman dives down into the black waters of a pond, holds onto stones and branches to keep her weighted. Eventually, she chooses to live, rises to the surface. At the time, this was as close to the truth as I could get. Since then, by writing memoir, I also have risen from the dark waters, caught hold of what hurts, held it in my own two hands. I have translated my wounds into words that bend and drift, true and inexact. I reach inside to feel the pulse of my own heart. That's gorgeous. Thank you so Thank much you. for reading it. The, it's all just so full of image and feeling. And I, I don't, I don't like to use the word brave a lot because it's used so much. But I find you a very brave writer, Karen, because you're often willing to say the thing that others aren't. Like earlier, you talked a little bit about why memoir is popular is that we sort of lack this grounding or soul, and that's not a language that a lot of writers are comfortable using. And you do oh. that. Thank you. I mean, I think I go back to the word listening. I think if we learn to listen and to truly, truly examine things, that's part of that skill that we can all gain. Yeah, show me your mug. Did you bring a coffee mug? Got this mug during a time, this is mentioned in the memoir. Mm -hmm. I experienced a cancer diagnosis and Carlisle and Ruth Morgans, the neighbor, were so good to help take care of me. Mm -hmm. And they, Ruth sent me this mug that she'd made, and you'll see it was one that got rejected in terms of selling because <laughs> it has right. a wound here. Yeah. 
and she said you need this and she said hold this mug fill it with warm tea it, it, the blue of it reminds me of the cover of the book too it's really gorgeous a little yeah. bit yeah. really really great thank you for bringing that so uh, one thing i like to do is to ask our visiting writer to share a writing prompt for anybody listening that that you have found helpful in writing memoir there's a poem um you might have heard it when you were at Heinemann teaching mm -hmm. Uh, it's called Where I'm From, and it's by George Ella Lyon. And it's um, about, in its many images of her childhood in Appalachia, something like being under the porch in the black dirt and tasting the dirt. Mm -hmm. And students, whatever age these students are, write their own Where I'm From poems. Mm -hmm. But then it doesn't end with that. They take one part of the poem Okay. like being under the floor with the glistening black dirt and mm -hmm. they dive into that image and write a scene and then the next part of course is to take the scene and dive into the scene and make more scenes reminds me a little bit of um dorothy ellison's short essay collection two or three things i know for sure oh i she love has, that yeah i love that too but i love i i borrowed our steel right or as we sometimes right we sometimes steal but her i know where i came from i love that as a beginner because it gets people to go wide where we came from but also getting that porch the idea of that image of the porch and the black listening dirt is just wonderful so thank you that's that's a really really good one and um, i like how um, genres connect. You can take poetry, turn it into memoir, and you could also make it fiction. And so you, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting to see, you know, the, the, the fluidity of, of genre. Yeah. And, and what does that depend on? Just what you want to do with it, right? Like for me, yeah. a poem is maybe I'm not going to process as intellectually. I mean, that, that sounds maybe not how I mean it, but it stays a sort of emotional mass. Uh, and prose starts to let me pick at it a little bit more. In fiction, right. I guess maybe I want to hide a little. I don't know. Like, well, how do you decide which, which genre you write in? I just begin and then it becomes <laughs> okay. obvious to me. Sort of like if I could possibly be a painter, that's what I would like the most. Mm -hmm. And it'd be sort of like putting the paint on the canvas and then playing, you know, mm -hmm. messing around with it and beginning to find a shape. That's mm -hmm. sort of what it would be like. Yeah, I love Unfortunately, it. Unfortunately, I'm not good with, with visual art. I wish I were. <laughs> It's so funny because I think your writing is so visual. So you're doing it and you, you know, even mosaic, right? It's like, it's made of words, but it is, a, it's a, it's very visual. So thank you again, Karen, for, for visiting the Memoir Cafe. I think your mug is kind of, um, well, I don't want to rate people's mugs. They're all really good, but that one's going to stay with me because of how you showed where you could caress the part that looks like an imperfection, but becomes part of the beauty of the thing. Really gorgeous. If you like what you heard today, hit subscribe and tick that little bell so that you're notified when new author interviews are posted. Thank you for everybody who has shared these or has liked them. Your support means a lot as I begin this new endeavor. Uh, also, consider buying a copy of Karen's book. It's a really good example of a mosaic memoir, of uh, writing that really does incorporate voice and lots of lyricism. There's lots of sound in this writing. So there are links below to places where you can buy that book and support uh, local bookstores, also to Karen's website and to the poem that she talked about. Thank you again for joining us. I look forward to seeing you next time at the Memoir Cafe. Thank you.